Hi, hello. We are here to talk about the seven star chestnut raids. I built seven counters for these raids. Uh, before we get into it, we're just going to go through what I think chestnut is supposed to do during this raid and why we built the Pokemon the way we did build them and talk a little bit about what to expect going into this weekend. Uh, now you can see on screen, there's a lot of notes here that me and my Twitch chat put together and we're going to go through all of these spend hours doing this and then I turn it into a YouTube video, which you're watching now. Now, Chestnut's main types are grass and fighting. It will be a rock type Terra, which means that it is weak to water, grass, fighting, ground, and steel, and it will have the ability Bulletproof. Now, Bulletproof will, pr will make Chestnut immune to moves like Energy Ball or Acid Spray, but uh, like past raid Pokemon, we have a way to get rid of that ability if we want to use those moves. Now, I say this every video, I will say it again, uh, I build Pokemon that work well in group situations. So if it is uh, you and a friend or you and your Discord server and you want to do these raids together, these are a bunch of Pokemon that synergize and work really well together. There are dozens, if not hundreds of content creators making solo builds, and there are little to no content creators making group play builds with Pokemon that work really, really well together. So. And that's what I've been doing, and that's what I will continue to be doing, um, because doing online raids with people who are only using solo builds make it incredibly frustrating because those online solo build raids do not synergize very well. So when you have four Iron Hands all belly drumming and then one by one dying, it is frustrating to fail that raid because no one wants to hit the heal cheer button or no one wants to hit a defense cheer button. Every, everyone wants to be the hero of their own story and no one wants to play support. Just my little soapbox, I guess. Now, the way I calculate damage is I always just pick the strongest move. So uh, in the case of Chestnut, the strongest physical type move that would be consistent would be Wood Hammer, Close Combat for Fighting, um, Stone Edge for Rock. Now, I do believe that Chestnut will have Rock Slide instead of Stone Edge, but if we can survive a Stone Edge, we can survive a Rock Slide. Same thing for close combat. If we can survive close combat, we can survive other fighting type moves. And we can see that Chestnut, unlike previous raid Pokemon, have has a really diverse moveset. Um, it has a lot of coverage for a lot of things. Uh, so the gimmick of Chestnut, I think, is um, a, a physical gimmick. When we look at its status type moves, it has Bulk Up, Leech Seed, Spiky Shield, which is its signature move. Spikes, Curse, Iron Defense, Sword Dance, Reflect, and Scary Face. Um, we've dealt with stuff like Sword Dance in the past. I believe two past raid Pokemon, seven star raid Pokemon have had Sword Dance. We have yet to see a Pokemon with Reflect or a raid boss that has used Reflect on us. While it's possible that Chestnut has its uh, move Spiky Shield, uh, that is pretty easy to ignore. Chestnut has a huge defense stat of 122. It's incredibly high and its special defense is an average 75. I've always liked special attackers uh, because of specific moves that benefit special attackers like Acid Spray or Apple Acid. We'll be using both this time around. But because of how high its defense is, on top of knowing moves like Iron Defense, Reflect, and Bulk Up, it's almost like we are making more work for ourselves if we bring physical attackers. Now, when I say that, I am sure you can beat the raid with a physical attacker. I have no doubt with that. But if we can go an easier route presented, then we should take that route because it benefits everyone in the raid. And failing a raid isn't that big of a deal. But if you're a parent uh, or somebody with very limited time just this weekend or the weekend the raid comes out, it can be frustrating to fail once or twice, um, especially if you only have so much time um, to game and it's very limited. So going back to uh, Chestnut's stats, uh, we know for sure it will be a physical attacker uh, based on the 107 attack stat. And I did just calculate the possible special moves it might have, granted the coverage. And uh, Focus Blast is maybe the only scary one. Uh, through all the calculations I did, I'll save you the time for that. Uh, but even so, the seven Pokemon we end up picking survive very, very well on the physical and the special side. I really doubt it would have one, but if it, if it does have any, you know, we, we did calculate them just in case. Uh, so going back to the theme, I think there's a couple things that Chestnut can do. I think that it could open with spikes. 
Uh, I think spikes fits chestnut thematically. Um, I also think that uh, bulk up or iron defense are two things that it could possibly do. Now we've seen bulk up with Cinderace, uh, and during that Cinderace battle, uh, I built a Cerule Edge and an Armor Rouge. And this goes back to what I said earlier. The Cerule Edge still was able to get the job done for some players, but it was at a severe disadvantage compared to the Armor Rouge because the Armor Rouge didn't have to worry about the plus one defense at all. It only had to worry about the plus one attack, which we can get rid of that with like Charm or Chilling Water. If we have a bunch of special attackers, we can kind of ignore defense, uh, Iron Defense, Reflect, and Bulk Up because we aren't hitting it on the physical side. Now, there is the one worry that this iron defense and this bulk up would lead to body press. So every body press we calculated for these Pokemon were always at a plus two, but we did calculate up to a plus six to make sure that we could survive. And we have ways to mi mitigate that as well. So I can imagine a spikes set. I can imagine a very physical defensive set. And I could imagine a body press set as well. Um, so that's kind of what we're building around. Uh, on top of that, by just not being a pure rock type Pokemon with grass and fighting stab behind it, it's weak to water, uh, which its primary grass type coverage will cover. So that's why we're not bringing in water Pokemon. It's weak to grass, but grass resists grass. And he doesn't get access to any fire type moves. Um, he does get access to one poison type move, Poison Jab, but all of our Pokemon can survive at least three, if not multiple poison jabs based on our, our how we trained our Pokemon. Plus, again, with Reflect on our side, we can survive more poison jabs. Um, he's weak to fighting, but a lot of fighting Pokemon are physically trained, uh, which we want to lean into specials. Also, fighting doesn't resist. Most fighting Pokemon don't regress, resist grass, rock, or other fighting. Ground is weak to grass, which we know for sure he will have a grass type move. <laughs> um, and then steel is weak to fighting. The one exception to that, or there maybe there's multiple exceptions, but the, the one exception that I'm thinking of is Golden Go, because uh, it is naturally ghost type. I can't get hit by its fighting stab type moves. Uh, but uh, Golden Go would still take a lot of damage from Earthquake. Especially if it was a bulk up earthquake, it would take a lot of damage from crunch, especially if it was a bulk up crunch. Uh, and the other move, um, stomping tantrum would be bad as well. Um, okay, so that's why that's why the seven Pokemon I built are all going to be grass type Pokemon, uh, because we we resist a lot and we can all benefit each other with grass type moves. Our first Pokemon would be Amoongus, Amoongus with the bull type nature. It would have the ability Effect Spore. Uh, Regenerator is the preferred ability, especially for competitive, but Regenerator doesn't work in raids. So um, when Chestnut makes a contact move with us, there's a chance that it could either um, get paralyzed or poisoned. Uh, it could technically go to sleep, but that's not going to happen because of our the move we're going to use here is Worry Seed. A lot of grass type Pokemon get access to uh, Energy Ball, which is a very good special attacking grass type move it also has a 10 percent chance of lowering the special defense of the pokemon it hits but chestnut's ability bulletproof blocks that so when we use a move like worry seed we actually change chestnut's ability from bulletproof to insomnia so it can no longer be put to sleep but we can use moves like acid spray or energy ball in order to do damage we also have Amoongus with Clear Smog, so in case of Chestnut using Iron Defense over and over, or even Bulk Up, we can actually reset those stats with Clear Smog. Since Clear Smog is considered an attack, this will work through the Raid Shield. Obviously, uh, Worry Seed and Energy Ball, they go together. Pollen Puff to heal your teammates. You could also Heal Cheer. We also have Giga, Giga Drain and Grassy Terrain if you want to go that route. Uh, if you want to get health back, replace that with Energy Ball. If you don't need to heal your teammates, Grassy Terrain's great. Uh, next, we have Appleton with the ability Ripen. Uh, so with Appleton having the ability Ripen uh, and with the item Citrus Berry, Citrus Berry would replenish 25% of your uh, HP. But with Ripen, it would double that to 50%. When Appleton gets hit to about half health, it will go back up to full health, ideally with the item and the ability. And then we have Recycle to get that berry back. Um, so we pretty much have a limited use of Citrus Berry and Ripen. That's, that's our health recovery here. Appleton gets access to Reflect. That's beneficial for the entire team. Obviously, Chestnut is a physical attacking Pokemon, so Reflect is beneficial to lead with. 
Apple Acid, which is very similar to Acid Spray, except it does more damage. And Appleton gets to take advantage of a Grass-type Pokemon using a Grass-type move, Stab, same type attack bonus. Um, but in, unlike uh, Acid Spray, Apple Acid will lower the special defense by one, still very beneficial for your entire team. Acid Spray will lower it by two. So other moves you can do is Iron Defense, which will make you really bulky if you have Reflect and Iron Defense up. I don't think you need to go that route either, unless you really like to be a very bulky Apple. Um, and then finally, you can Grassy Train. I don't know if I talked about Grassy Train yet, but Grassy Train will increase all grass type moves and make your grass type do moves do 50% more damage. That would also increase Chestnut's grass type moves, but because we're all grass Pokemon, we resist all those anyways. Since he's rock, we get the benefit of doing 50% more damage every time we hit a grass type move button. Grassy Train also decreases the damage that would come from Earthquake in case he has it. It would also decrease the damage from Magnitude and from Bulldoze, although I don't think Chestnut can learn those two moves anyway, so the main move that it would decrease damage from would be Earthquake, which would be good to have if he has Earthquake and then your teammate is a Golden Go uh, because the Grassy Train would reduce that damage. Uh, next, we have Flapple, which isn't as bulky as Appleton, uh, but it has the same Ripen Citrus Berry Recycle gimmick. Um, it does not get access to Reflect, but it does get access to Acid Spray. Its signature move is not Apple Acid, but it is Grav Apple. Uh, Grav Apple would be situational. It would lower the physical defense, not the special defense like Apple Acid, the physical defense by one stage. Um, the main reason I would do this is only in the situation where Chestnut would have body press. Because again, we don't care if it's doing iron defense because we're hitting it specially, not physically. Um, but we would worry about that physical defense stat if he's going to use it to body press us. So that's the kind of the main reason why Grav Apple is there. Not to do damage, just to control the physical stat in case of body press. Uh, next we have Go-Goat, a signature ability. No other Pokemon besides Go-Goat and Skidoo have this ability. It's called Grass Belt. Um, when Grassy Terrain is up, uh, it increases your physical defense. We're going to use Grassy Terrain, and we're going to use the item Terrain Extender, so Grassy Terrain will last eight turns instead of five turns, and then that will give us a very bulky goat. Go Goat also gets access to Worry Sea to shut off that ability. Um, it gets access to Giga Drain and Energy Ball, depending on which one you would prefer to use. Giga Drain gives you a little health back. Energy Ball does more damage. Uh, Energy Ball will work once the ability is suppressed. Um, and then you could also go growth if you want to increase your damage output or if you like to help others, you have helping hand. Um, but I cannot imagine uh, Go Goat dying with terrain up and its ability grass pelt. Plus, when the terrain is up, your grass type moves do more damage. There's a lot of synergy happening. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video and these builds have been helpful, uh, I would appreciate if you like, subscribe, leave a comment of which Pokemon you're most excited to use. It really helps me out. Uh, I think 69%, you can insert a joke there, 69% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So just a mid video. Hey, thanks for hitting that like, subscribe button, comment button, all that stuff. Thank you. Uh, next, we have our two big attackers. Uh, these would sit very well next to the support Pokemon I just talked about. The first one would be Decidueye with the ability Overgrow. Long Reach is just really useless here, but Overgrow would kick in in case um, Chestnut hits you with a really hard-hitting move. Overgrow would activate. We're going to do Miracle Seed with Feather Dance, Nasty Plot, Giga Drain, and Grassy Terrain. Again, same, just preference if you want to use Energy Ball or Double Team. Energy Ball would require a Pokemon sitting next to you to Worry Seed, Chestnut. Um, nasty Plot to boost your damage. Giga Drain with the Miracle Seed and the Nasty Plot all to boost your damage output and to get your health back. Feather Dance is huge here because Chestnut is a physical attacker. Feather Dance will decrease Chestnut's damage output by negative two. I would open up with a Feather Dance. That's kind of the first thing you should do with Decidueye. I think one should be good enough. Remember, you cannot Feather Dance when the Raid Shield is up, so you want to do it as quickly as possible. All right, I would Feather Dance and then Giga Drain until you get to Terra. And then once you Trasslize, I would start Nasty Plotting. Um, Grassy Train only if no one else is doing that, but if, if you have other Pokemon doing that, great. The great thing about Grassy Terrain over Nasty Plot is obviously Nasty Plot boosts Giga Drain damage. But so does Grassy Terrain. 
Grassy Terrain will boost Giga Drain damage. The difference is if Chestnut clears your stats, it will clear your Nasty Plot. It cannot clear your Grassy Terrain. Grassy Terrain will last five turns. So it is definitely more consistent if, if Chestnut resets stats multiple times. Uh, next, we have Lorantis. This is a uh, similar Lorantis to what we use for Pikachu. It has the ability Contrary. So when its stats decrease, um, it actually flips it. So they increase. So the signature move here is Leaf Storm. Every time you use a Leaf Storm, that would be negative two to your special attack. But because Lorantis has Contrary, it would actually be a plus two. So three Leaf Storms would put you at a plus six. That's pretty much the main damaging move you're going to do <laughs> with Lorantis. But Lorantis has a little bit of setup. So you could Worry Seed, obviously very beneficial for other Pokemon that might use Energy Ball or Acid Spray. Uh, Grassy Terrain to boost your Leaf Storm damage output. If you don't need to Worry Seed and you don't need to Grassy Terrain, I would suggest Sweet Scenting once. The main reason Sweet Scent is here is to increase your accuracy. Leaf Storm is a 90% accuracy move, and you want to hit it because it gives you, the, um, it gives you that special d attack increase. So missing a Leaf Storm feels pretty bad. Um, you could help with that by using like a wide lens, but then you can't use Shell Bell. So I think it's totally worth it to, uh, if you have other support Pokemon next to you that are setting up Reflect, or they're setting up Grassy Terrain, or they're Worry Seeing, uh, your plan is, you know, Sweet Scent and then start Leaf Storming. Make sure you PP up your Leaf Storm, because it's normally five. You want it to be eight. If you are struggling and running out of Leaf Storms, I guess just chestnut which i don't think you should because you, this is going to do the most damage out of anyone here squeeze in a, either a giga drain or an energy ball and then kind of what i said with the sidui you just want to get to terra as fast as possible but use like giga drain or energy ball to get to terra and then terrestrialize leaf storm to do the most amount of damage and then finally we're going to end on another supporter uh zarina is a very physical mon and there's no way to make zarina a special mon <laughs> but zarina zarina has Two things that we want. Number one, it has Trop Kick, which lowers Chestnut's physical attack, which is great, obviously, uh, because then Chestnut's doing less damage to you. You're staying alive. That's better. That's that's only a good thing. Serena has access to Taunt. We want to make sure we always have at least one Pokemon with access to Taunt. It's possible that Chestnut has the move Spiky Shield, which is his signature move. Now, Spiky Shield doesn't matter for the Pokemon I just talked about because they're all special attackers. But if you attack Chestnut, when it puts up Spiky Shield, it would lower your physical attack. So we can taunt to at least stop it from spiking shield, using spiky, spiky Shield so we can attack it more consistently. We can also ta taunt it to stop it from using Bulk Up, Iron Defense, Reflect, etc. We have Reflect here uh, because our only other Reflector was the Apple. Uh, and then we have Helping Hand. So Trop Kick does do damage, but it's not going to do a lot. But it the versatility you get from Trop Kick is still worth it uh, because it lets your other team do more damage, not die. That's only a good thing. And then Helping Hand to Helping Hand your teammates to do more damage. Um, by doing a complete support build of Zarina, we can just invest max HP, max defense, and then we don't have to worry about putting stuff into special attack or attack. We can just go full support here. By setting Reflect and or Taunting, then Trop Kick, Helping Hand, Trop Kick, Helping Hand. So um, I think all of these Pokemon synergize really, really well together. I think Grassy, Grassy Train obviously benefits everyone. Worry Seed benefits everyone. Reflect benefit, benefits everyone. Trop Kick benefits everyone. Feather Dance benefits everyone. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of cool things about these Pokemon. And whether or not Chestnut has Woodhammer, Close Combat, Body Press, Stone Edge, Takedown, we've calculated all of these moves and made sure all of these Pokemon survive these moves. Um, we calculated Body Presses at plus two, plus three, plus four. Um, we even calculated the possible but very unlikely chance that it has one or two special type moves. Uh, so there, there were other Pokemon I took in consideration. Uh, we went through a bunch, and uh, you can we 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 talked about <laughs> we talked about a lot of Pokemon here. Um, so all these Pokemon went through basic calculations, and I do think Bronzong, Golden Go, Grimstarl, Iron Leaves, and Tauros can all work really well. Uh, I wouldn't be upset if I saw any of these Pokemon in the raids. Golden Go uh, I saw is being talked about a lot on um, social media. Uh, Crunch, any ground type move that would be Earthquake or Stomping Tantrum, um, Shadow Claw, uh, does make Golden Go a little bit scary, and that's why I didn't suggest it in the normal seven. Off the bat, they're not 
like none of these moves like one shot Golden Go. But the worry with Golden Go would be like a bulk up Earthquake or a bulk up Crunch. You know, with, with Samurott, we played it really cautious and I was very worried Samurott would have a flying type move that would make a lot of fighting Pokemon pretty useless. Or not Samurott, I'm sorry, Intellion. Intellion being ice type, which is weak to fighting, but Intellion had uh, flying coverage, which would be super effective against flight fighting. That didn't end up happening. I was very cautious on that. So I, I'm just being cautious against Golden Go again. Uh, I think uh, Grimmsnarl is, is really great. If you decide to bring Grimmsnarl, uh, Reflect, obviously, and then Chilling Water are probably the two moves I would, I would definitely recommend on Grimmsnarl. And then you can kind of, you know, pick Taunt or, or Thunder Wave or whatever else you would like in the Grimmsnarl spot, spot. But I think Reflect and Chilling Water are big for Grimmsnarl. Iron Leaves seems to do okay. I just don't really like it because it's physical. And I guess this is the part where I show um, a Pokemon with the same physical and special attack using a physical and special move and show the difference but okay so we got we have chestnut's stats of uh 122 verse 75 and i'm just taking a basic amoongus here and i'm just taking two energy balls one's a physical energy ball one's a special energy ball the special one's on top they're just coming from amoongus not like a super powerful pokemon i just put plus two plus two just in case we have some kind of boost that way the numbers are a little bit bigger but as you can see, with no modifications here, the same move from the same Pokemon hits so much harder on the special side because of Chestnut's uh, high physical defense. Chestnut, as a Pokemon as well, has abilities to, uh, he can set up Reflect. So again, that doesn't affect the special, but it does affect the physical. Um, he cannot light screen, but he can also bulk up. So if he bulks up once, Again, our, our special energy ball is still doing crazy good damage. Our physical is not. Chestnut also has access to iron defense, so that would be a plus two. And again, uh, our special is doing great, and our physical is not. We've seen the same situation with like Cinderace, where the sp even though like Cinderace would like bulk up maybe once or twice, Pokemon like Cerule Edge were not nearly as good as Pokemon like Armor Rouge. Could you still use Cerule Edge? Yeah, totally. But it took way longer. You did significantly less damage, even if Cinderace bulked up once. I guess the moral of this is like, can you bring physical Pokemon? Yeah, sure. Uh, it would just you just would not do nearly as no, much damage as you would by just bringing a special Pokemon. Um, and it, with all of its like reflex and bulk ups, you can just literally ignore all of that uh, because it has nothing to boost its special defense. It only has stuff to boost its physical defense. So um, that's, ju that's just why I would suggest leaning into special Pokemon over physical Pokemon for this raid. Uh, and Tauros uh, does get the Intimidate off and doesn't have a, like, a lot of weaknesses. I think, I think Tauros is okay too. And here's some other Pokemon that I think are still okay. Uh, Dragapult, Dragonair with Eviolite, Burigraph, Gudra. Although Gudra's special defense is so incredibly high, and then its physical defense is very meh. Uh, but you can get around that with Chilling Water. Uh, Houndstone is really great here, actually. My, my problem with Iron Hands has is is been my problem for the last six months. Uh, Iron Hand players, they could literally benefit and help their whole team if they just take one second and they defense cheer before they belly drum. But the problem is, like, Iron Hands players are always with other Iron Hand players, and no one wants to do that. No one wants to hit Heal Cheer. I think Iron Hands behind Reflect is, is really good. But, again, I, 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 don't, I don't think Iron Hands has ever been the problem. I think Iron Hand players have always been the problem. They have this really weird mindset of wanting to have, like, this hero complex every time they play. Uh, instead of, like, recognizing that group raids are a team-based thing, and they still haven't figured out that it's a team-based thing. Rydon seems very okay here, too. Um, Lilliganth, it's just not as good as the other seven grass Pokemon we picked. Slitherwing also, I think, is fine. Toad Scroll, uh, you could definitely make this one work. It's just not, not optimal. Like, Toad Scroll, I would feel very... I think a lot of these Pokemon here in the slightly talked about, they all do super good behind a Reflect. If you, if you have the Reflect, I think these all, these all do great. Uh, and I don't recommend these. Again, I think... When I get to these, it's like you need to reflect and you need something else in order to make that happen. I don't know. Somebody suggested Magikarp. 
but they're f f f f f you can see you can pa pause to read if we're on TikTok. you can see that there was calculations here but yeah i i if you need help twitch.tv slash p-k-m-n-c-a-s-t we'll be doing this on thursday night when the raids start and then um on friday as well so if you need help with the seven star chestnut uh, feel free to bring over a level 100 Pokemon and we will help you get through it as fast as possible. Obviously, there'll probably be a line or a queue, but we uh, I'll, I'll raid until everyone gets through. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.